dear student, welcome to the last lecture in digital communication. Communication systems are designed to handle a variety of output information sources. In analog communication, we have considered analog communication systems using code word modulation schemes such as AM, DSB, SSB, PM and F. It is used for transmitting output of analog information sources. We have also discussed in digital communication systems used digital modulation schemes such as ASK, FSK and PSK. This is also for transmitting output of discrete information sources or digital information sources. In this video, we will consider the use of digital communication system for transmitting the output of analog information sources. In this lecture, we will learn how a common telephone line work using the principle of digital transmission of analog signals. In earlier days, when you were making a telephone call, the telephone converts your analog voice data into a sample of analog signal and send it down a circuit from your home to the telephone company's network. These are days when we encountered frequent loss of connectivity and noise. Today, all the common carrier networks use digital transmission. In this, the wire that runs from your home goes to a telephone switch that connects you to the telephone network. This switch contains a codec which converts the analog signal from your phone to digital signal. This digital signal is then sent through the telephone network until it hits the switch of a local group for the person you are calling. This switch uses its codec to convert the digital signal which is used inside the telephone network to get back the analog signal or the voice that is needed by the person in the local loop of the telephone. In this video, we will learn about digital transmission of analog signals. We will also look into how an analog signal can be converted into digital signal using sampling and quantization. We will also see how we can transmit it using a pulse code modulation scheme. We will look into frequency and time division multiplexing for sending different information channels through a single line. And as an example, we will look into the time division multiplexing in PCM telephone systems. Digital transmission of analog signals. Digital transmission of analog signal is possible by the virtue of sampling theorem, which tells us that the analog signal can be reproduced from an appropriate set of its samples and hence we need to transmit only the sample values as they occur rather than the analog signal itself. Samples of the analog signal can be transmitted using analog pulse modulation scheme wherein the amplitude, width or position of a pulse waveform is varied in proportion to the values of the samples. The key distinction between analog pulse modulation scheme and code word modulation is that in code word modulation, some parameter of the modulated wave varies continuously with the message. In analog pulse modulation, some parameter of each pulse is modulated by a particular sample value of the message. The method of transmitting the sampled values of an analog signal is to round off or to quantize the sampled values to one of a predetermined value and then transmit the sampled and quantized signal using digital modulation scheme. The block diagram of a system that uses this scheme is here. In this, 
we have an analog information source. The x of t is the analog information output and it is converted into a symbol sequence a set of s of k using a sampler quantizer and an encoder. The sequence s of k, the set s k is transmitted using digital communication system. The output that is x k cap will differ occasionally from the input s k due to transmission errors caused by the channel noise and inter symbol interference in digital communication system. An estimate that is x cap of k of the sent signal x of t is obtained from s cap of x cap k through the process of decoding and digital to analog conversion. The reconstructed waveform x cap of t will be a noisy version of the transmitted signal. The noise is due to sampling and quantization of the original signal x of t and due to symbol errors that occur in the digital communication system. The overall performance of this system is measured by signal to noise power ratio and the power ratio of the output receiver. A or D conversion or analog to digital conversion. Analog voice data must be first translated into a series of binary digits before they get transmitted over a digital circuit. This is done by sampling and quantization. Sampling is the amplitude of the sound wave at a regular intervals is taken and translating it into a binary number. Analog to digital conversion of signal uh, can be done by an analog to digital converter or ADC which uses sampling and quantization. The original wave is quantized into pulse amplitudes after quantizing the samples are taken at specific points to produce the modulated pulses. The figure shown here is an example and here it, it is converted, the analog signal is converted into 8 different amplitudes starting from 000 to 111 where 000 corresponding to 0 and 111 corresponding to 8. The diagram shows here the original signal and this is the digitized signal. The digitized signal is a rough approximation of the original signal. The original signal had a smooth flow while the digitized signal is in steps. Sampling is a process of inspecting the value or the voltage of an analog signal in regular interval of time. The time between the samples is referred to as sample period represented by capital T and it's measured in seconds and the number of samples taken per second is referred to as sample frequency and this is measured in samples per second or hertz. Basically sampling is taking a snapshot of the values of analog signal so that you can have an accurate representation of how the analog signal is changing over time. The receiver must convert the bits of information it receives into sample values and then recreate what it thinks the analog signal looks like from the samples one. When the samples are closer together, that is we have a high uh, sampling rate, then the, it is more likely that the received signal 
will actually represent which will be more closer to an analog signal which was sent. When the sampling rate is low, the received signal may differ from that of what is being sent. Quantizing or encoding is a process of mapping the sampled analog values to discrete voltage levels which are then represented by binary numbers or bits. This is needed because the analog symbol contains a large number of real uh, values and they occur in continuum. An analog signal consists of an infinite set of possible values. In a digital system, there is only a finite amount of memory, so only a finite number of values can be used to represent the samples of the analog signal. Converting the sample value from a set of infinite possible to one of a finite set of values is called quantization or quantizing. These values are referred to as quantization levels. For example, the .mp3 or .wav files which convert music signal runs within a range of plus or minus 1. Transmission using pulse code modulation. We have already seen and discussed in digital modulation scheme is in pulse modulation that is PCM of an analog signal X of T is sampled and then the samples are quantized and encoded. <coughs> the combination of the quantizer and encoder is often termed as analog to digital A to D or A by D converter. The sampler in practical system is usually a sample and a hold device. The combination of a sample and a hold device and an A by D converter accepts the analog signal and replaces it with a sequence of chord symbols. The digitally encoded signal is then transmitted over a noisy channel or a communication channel. When the noisy version of the signal is, arrives at the receiver, the first operation performed is the separation of signal from the noise. Such separation is possible because quantization of the signal. A feature that eases this task of separating signal and noise is during each bit interval the receiver receives a matched filter. It has only make a simple decision either 0 or 1 when it is received. This relative reliability of this decision in a binary PCM is good compared to the other modulation scheme. After decoding a group of binary digits representing the code word for the quantized value of the sample, the receiver has to assign a signal level to the code word. The functional block that performs this task of accepting sequences of binary digits and generating the appropriate sequences is done by the digital to analog converter. The reconstructed signal X cap of T is identical with the input that is X of T except it has quantization noise that is NQ of T and another noise component N0 of T that result from decoding errors uh, due to the channel noise. Bandwidth of PCM is always greater than two times the frequency of sampling. Since PCM uh, requires transmission, uh, it uh, sorry, it is two times 
the frequency of the higher voice voltage. Since PCM requires transmission of several digits of each message sample, it is apparent that the PCM bandwidth will be much greater than the message bandwidth. A lower bound to the bandwidth that can be obtained is if the message bandwidth, maximum message bandwidth is f of x, then the quantized samples occur at a rate of fs which is greater than 2 times f of x samples per second. Noise in PCM can be represented by signal to noise ratio. The output x of t in the PCM system can be written as x0 of t is equal to uh, x0 of t uh, plus the quantization noise nq of t and n0 of t and nq of t is due to quantization and n0 of t is the additional channel noise. The overall signal to noise ratio of the baseband output which is used to measure the signal quality is defined by energy density of the input signal that is the total output signal E x0 of t divided by the sum of energy density output of the two types of noises. Time division multiplexing. Time division multiplexing or TDM is a technique used for transmitting several analog message signal over one communication channel by dividing the time frame into slot such that one slot will send one message signal. In comparison to frequency division multiplexing, which divides the available bandwidth in the slot where ban one slot uh, or one uh, frame here is a bandwidth sends each signal. For input signal all band limited f of x by input filters we have a low pass filters which are sequentially sampled using uh, at the transmitter using a rotary switch or communicator. The switch makes uh, revolutions per second and extract one sample at a time you, and in one complete revolution it touches all the lines and all the lines say 1, 2, 3 and 4 are sampled at different intervals. The output of the switch is a pulse amplitude modulated waveform containing samples of the input signals periodically interlaced in time. The samples from the adjacent input message is separated by if t is the total time period and we have four channels then the interlacing or the time interval between each uh, our in channel is t by 4. If we have m channels then it will be t by m. Therefore the samples uh, are the message uh, signals are separated by a time t by m where m is the number of input channel and t is the time period of the signal. And a set of n pulses consisting in one sample from each to n input channel and this is called a frame. At the receiver, the samples from the individual channels are separated and distributed by another rotary switch which is called a distributor or a decommutator. The samples from each channel are filtered to reproduce the original message signal. The rotary switches at the transmitter and the receiver are usually electronic circuits 
and have to be carefully synchronized. Synchronization is perhaps the most critical aspect of TDM. There are two levels of synchronization in TDM. The frame synchronization and the sample or the word synchronization. Frame synchronization is necessary to establish when each group of the sample begin and the word synchronization is necessary to properly separate the samples within each frame. The interlaced sequence of the samples may be transmitted by direct PAM or the sample values may be quantized and transmitted using PCM. Time division multiplexed PCM is used in a variety of applications. The most important one is PCM telephone system where voice or another signals are multiplexed and transmitted over a variety of transmission media including pair of wires, wave guides and optical fibers. TDM in PCM telephone or TDM PCM telephone system. TDM telephone system operate on a time division basis that is a number of conversations share a single communication path. Conversations are each assigned to a communication path for short periodically recurring intervals. Samples of the uh, conversation are coded into corresponding binary words using pulse code modulation technique. These words are transmitted over a communication path during assigned time slot and are decoded into original conversation in receiving terminals. A TDM switching system usually has two on outgoing paths and two incoming paths connected between a network in the switch system and is associated user communication terminals. A conversation between two user terminals is allocated one time slot in the trans is transmitted is via the incoming and the outgoing path. Both incoming and outgoing path are used to maintain each side of the conversation separate from each other. The network determines uh, the incoming path and the outgoing path of the two user terminal and the signal on the incoming path of one is transferred to the outgoing path of the another. The user terminals are enabled under the control of an interconnection memory in the switching system. The memory includes a word location corresponding to each time slot in a time slot frame. The memory frame at each location contains the address of the two terminals to be connected together as well as the identity of the path which need to be enabled to achieve the interconnection. One example of such TDM PCM telephone system is a T1 carrier system. For a T1 carrier, 24 voice channels are sent over one communication channel. The frequency of a voice signal can range between 300 Hz to 3.2 kHz. Therefore, the minimum required rate is twice that of Fx that we have already seen. If the highest Fx is 3.2 kHz, then the minimum required rate is 6.4 kHz or 64 kilohertz and we just try to oversample it we just oversample it to 8 kilohertz 24 voice channels uh, signals are sampled at a rate of 8 kilohertz and resulting samples are quantized and is converted 
into a 7 bit PCM code word. At the end of each bit or code word, there is an additional bit. You can see additional bit here and here. At the end, we have a 7 bit code word. And the end of each code word, we have an additional bit. And this is used uh, for the frame synchronization purpose. So, here we have 24 channels. One channel is divided into 7 bit PCM code word and a sampler, sample timing, or 1 bit which is used for synchronization. Similarly, for channel 2, channel 3, up to channel 24. And after convert uh, uh, all the channels, uh, 1 to 24 channels are being sent, another uh, bit is sent and this is for frame synchronization. This is for word synchronization. As we have already seen, there are two types of synchronization in TDM. This bit is for word synchronization and this bit is used for frame synchronization. Therefore, in total, we have 7 plus 1, 8 bit in one word or one frame and we have 24 such frames. That is 8 into 24 plus one additional frame which is used for synchronization at the end of 24 frames used for frame synchronization and this will give us a total of 193 bits and it is at a bit rate of 1.544 megabits per second. A T1 system is designed primarily for short distance and heavy usage in metropolitan areas. This maximum length of a T1 system is now limited to 50 to 100 miles with a repeater spacing of 1 mile. The overall T carrier system is made up of various combinations of lower order T carrier subsystems designed for accommodating voice channels. Let us discuss the difference between time division multiplexing and frequency division multiplexing. Time division multiplexing TDM and frequency division multiplexing FDM. These are techniques used to accomplish same signal processing task. In TDM, the analog signals are separated in time but as jumbled in the frequency domain. In FDM, the signals are separated in frequency domain but are mixed together in the time domain. From a theoretical point of view, the two systems may be viewed as a dual technique with neither of one having a significant advantage over the other. However, from a practical point of view, TDM seems to be superior to FDM due to two reasons. The first is that the TDM circuitry is much simpler than the FDM circuitry. FDM equipment consists of an analog circuits for modulators, carrier generators, bandpass filters and demodulators for each channel. In comparison, the TDM circuitry is digital and it consists only of a commu uh, commutator and a distributor. The digital circuitry is highly modular in nature and provides a reliable and efficient operation. The second advantage of TDN system is the relatively small inter-channel crosstalk arising from non-linearities in the circuit that handle the signals in the transmitter and the receiver. These non-linearities produce intermodulation and harmonic distortion that affect both high frequency and low frequency channels in FDM systems. Thus, the phase and amplitude of linearity 
requirements of the FDM circuits is very important when the number of channels being multiplexed are large. In contrast, there is no crosstalk in the TDM due to circuit nonlinearities if the pulses are completely isolated and no overlapping since the signals from different channels are not handled simultaneously but are allowed at different time intervals. As the linearity requirements for the TDM circuit is not quite important as FDM circuit. However, TDM crosstalk immunity is contingent upon a wide band response and the absence of delay distortion. Disadvantages of TDM include the fact that the pulse accuracy, the time jitter and the synchronization become the major problem at high bit rates. By this we have come to an end of this chapter. In this video we have discussed the digital transmission of analog signals. We have seen how we can convert analog signal into digital signal and how we can transmit using pulse code modulation. We have seen time division multiplexing and how work a TDM PCM telephone system. Thank you for listening.